Welcome everyone and thank you for attending the MRC webinar Wednesday. Today's topic is fighting e-commerce fraud during the peak sales season. I am Josh Dwight, a U.S. program manager with the Merchant Risk Council. And I will be today's moderator. So feel free to submit questions in the Q&A chat box during the presentation and I will ask the questions at the end of the presentation and as time permits. Before we begin today's great webinar, I will provide a short overview of the MRC. The MRC is a nonprofit trade association for e-commerce fraud and payment professionals. The MRC was established in 2000 by a group of wonderful merchant leaders who shared a common goal of optimizing e-commerce payments while strengthening fraud and risk management activities. The MRC has grown and currently supports over 560 member organizations across 30 countries around the world. The MRC has many great resources and events, including webinars, rapid EDU learning courses, white papers, community forums, conferences, and many more that can be found at www.merchantriskcouncil.org. Today, we have Byron King, a data scientist from Natone, here to discuss steps to fighting e-commerce fraud during the holiday peak season. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Byron. Hi, everyone. I'll go ahead and show myself for the time being. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Um, thank you, Josh, for moderating this conversation. Uh, and thanks for everyone who uh, helped organize this event and coordinate this event. Um, this is my first MRC webinar, so I'm excited and happy to share my thoughts on this particular topic. So I have no handouts available, but I think the slides are perhaps enough. And we, I'm sure we can make them available to anyone after the call. Um, so if there's any need for additional informational materials, I'm sure our team can provide them. So I know Josh gave me a brief introduction. Maybe I'll go ahead and elaborate a little bit. Uh, I'm Byron. I'm a data scientist for Natone. Um, primarily, I'm involved with building fraud detection models, so models that, that detect whether or not a transaction uh, for one of our e-commerce clients is fraudulent or not. Um, I'm also an e-commerce vertical owner, meaning that I help make many of the business decisions for our e-commerce clients. And, and so my responsibilities, um, among which involve uh, fraud preparedness, uh, especially during times of estimated high fraudulent activity, and that'll be the topic of today's webinar. Um, but I also help coordinate our other teams to make sure our responses are timely and, and effective. Okay, great. So why don't we hop on, Let's see, I'll push this question. Why don't we hop into our prepared poll question? So on your screen, you should see this question. Um, so has your fraud strategy for the peak sale season changed significantly in 2020 in comparison to last year? So maybe I'll give everyone a few seconds to respond. Maybe I'll Turn off my camera as well for the time being. And while everyone is is filling in this question, I can go ahead and, and give a brief summary of, of the contents of this webinar. Um, so the first couple of slides I'll talk about um, will give some brief background into why fraud preparedness during peak sales season uh, is such a big deal, why it's important. And then I'll give perhaps an overview of, of preparedness so what is in our scope to prepare for, what's not exactly in our reach to prepare for during this time of year. And then I'll end with some specific techniques to prepare for these increases in fraudulent, fraudulent activity during peak sale season. So give everyone maybe a couple more seconds to wrap up. Okay, so maybe we can head to the next uh, slide, which is the results. Okay, interesting. So we have a pretty even breakdown across the three 
answers. Um, so for the percentage of you who have changed their, their strategy, um, I'm sure we can give you some, some strategies for making uh, changes for this year or even next. Uh, and for those of you who already have kind of changed your strategy a little bit, we can give you perhaps some new ideas that you haven't thought of to prepare for this increase in fraudulent activity during this, during this time. Okay, so why don't we move to the next slide. Um, we'll, again, we'll discuss kind of the background in terms of uh, why fraud preparedness at this time of year is so essential. Okay, great. So when we're talking about peak sale season, essentially what we're talking about is the holiday season, right? So what do we see during the holiday season? We see this kind of increase in sales volume. Uh, in, in fact, for most of, most of our e-commerce clients, uh, Black Friday is the single most high volume day of the year. And this goes with, with uh, most of our clients, e-commerce clients. Uh, and, this and this includes, in fact, the number of orders, but also the aggregate transaction value, right? So we also notice across clients that average order value is the highest at this time of year, uh, the highest number of items per cart, so the number of, of um, items that you buy in a single transaction. And we also see kind of a unique blend during this time of year of new and existing customers, right? And so we often see that for existing customers, they ha often have um, a much larger average value order than in comparison, even to uh, the previous few months. So, yep, so we see increased sales volumes, but we also see this kind of phenomenon of staggered fraud, but staggered chargebacks in particular. And so this is going to be a common theme throughout this presentation. Um, this kind of difference between the transaction order date and the date on which uh, that transaction was reported as fraud. And so uh, the biggest takeaway, one of the biggest takeaways here is that the fraud rate will uh, have not have the biggest impact in this kind of current month, in, in these current uh, holiday season months, but in the subsequent months that follow its peak sales season. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit on that. Uh, later in this webinar. And finally, we see also an increase in fraudulent activity during this time of year. Um, so some years we see much higher fraudulent activity than normal, but often for other or for certain e-commerce clients, this is not the case just because um, the transaction value in aggregate is much higher than normal, right? So fraud per transaction value is sometimes lower in these months due to just the increase in volume of not fraud traffic. Um, but again, it's still important to be better prepared against fraud uh, during these months more than usual, um, just because we need to be prepared for these kind of future subsequent uh, low value months where um, these months often have uh, increase in fraudulent activity or reported fraudulent activity from the peak sale season, which often drives up chargeback rates and fraudulent rates. But I'll get into that more in depth shortly. Okay, so let's move on. Yes, so unpreparedness at this at this particular time can really be can really spell disaster, right? So um, the effects of poor planning uh, often in this in this context appear at the worst possible time, right? So uh, so if there's an increase in fraudulent activity in November and in December, the kind of holiday season months, um, the the fraud that is reported will occur in the subsequent low sales volume months, right? So in January in particular, as well as in February, we see across our e-commerce clients, uh, decreased sales volume, right? So lower e-commerce activity in aggregate in general. And this makes sense, right? So a lot of people have their kind of disposable income already used up. They're less likely to buy for others. They're often less likely to buy for themselves. Um, so, we see in general just decreased sales trend and transaction volumes, in, especially in January, right? But these are exactly these months where uh, fraud that's occurred in, in peak sale season times are reported, right? So we see a high fraudulent rate often um, in these low transaction, low volume months in January in particular across credit card schemes often. And so in general, and this is going to be the motto of this 
this webinar, this presentation, is that the best course of action is, again, not to be scared, but be prepared. Be prepared for this increase of in, in fraudulent activity and be prepared for this kind of low volume transaction uh, months that follow this peak sale season. Okay, great. So now I'm going to shift a little bit into talking about um, preparedness in general, right? And so I'll do this more from a data science perspective. Um, so then there might be some interesting takeaways that you have if you're part of a data science team yourself. But even if not, um, the, the strategies for preparedness are the same. So in general, it's good for us to figure out what is in our reach uh, to tackle and what is not. So in general, uh, and we want to come to an answer to the question of what exactly will the increase in volume be? Um, so often we get or collect forecast estimates from our clients, but we also create our own forecasts as well um, for what the increase in transaction volumes will be during this peak sales season. And this is useful. This is useful because we are able to allocate resources, especially tech resources, uh, much better if we anticipate what, what the increase in, in forecast estimates will be. Um, in particular, we can, for example, increase server space so that our models that are working in production to detect fraud work uninterrupted. Um, the kind of a worst case scenario is if we don't uh, give enough resources to those models and they stop working in production uh, right at the time when they're most needed. This is kind of a scenario that we want to avoid. But in general, we also want to improve our fraud detection models in general, right? So we want to look at uh, recent fraud activity for, to this end, right? So oftentimes um, there will be time periods of recent activity that match characteristics of fraudulent activity during peak sale season, right? So if you recently uh, have witnessed a kind of increase in fraudulent activity coming from certain geographies, this is likely to bleed over into the peak sale season. Um, but it's also important to look at last year's fraudulent activity as well. And so what we do is we often create new features and train new models uh, that use characteristics from last year's peak sale season as well, um, in case the, those trends are cyclical in nature. Um, but again, we want to make these changes and then sort of freeze these changes, right? We don't want to change anything uh, that is going to work in production too close to peak sale season, right? We want to make sure that everything is tested properly and that we, we avoid the scenario where something goes wrong in production because we deployed a change right before peak sale season. Uh, great. So now I'll discuss, um, I'll introduce the topic of, of forecasting more specifically. Um, so this, this uh, involves a little bit more specific number crunching to give our team a good sense of what to expect exactly um, from these peak sale seasons. Great. So again, I'm going to treat this this topic also from a from a data science perspective. Um, again, when, when going into virtually any unknown scenario, it's good to look at data on similar situations, right? And so I already talked about uh, this a little bit, but it's good to gather information on uh, previous year's peak sale season volumes, right? Um, but also recent activity, especially recent fraudulent activity that might be characteristic not only of recent months, but also peak sale season months as well. Uh, so I can also talk about this uh, visualization to the right here. Um, what this sort of gets at is that there's an interplay kind of a, an exchange between the aggregate total fraud volume and the total transaction volumes, right? And so what we see in, the, in this graph to a certain extent is that they generally have an inverse relationship, right? And that, that sort of makes sense when we look at the, the usual calculation for how chargeback rates are calculated or how fraud rates are calculated sort of in general. Uh, in the numerator, we have kind of the total fraud reported in a particular month, and then that's divided by the total transaction volume in the month, right? So when uh, there's an increase in transaction volume, that sort of uh, 
uh, drowns out the fraudulent activity in a particular month. So we see that in, in this graph here. Um, so when there's a spike in, in sales volume, there's often sort of a dip in chargeback rate, even for that given month, right? But it's also important to remember that we don't, when preparing in peak sales season times, we care more about the subsequent low value or low transaction volume months than we do the current months of the peak sales season. So that's important, important to note. And again, we're gonna see kind of fraudulent activity that is both new and not new, right? So characteristics of, of recent fraud activity will probably appear, but perhaps some new attributes will appear during peak sales season as well. So we want to be prepared for that, as well as some cyclical elements that appear for every peak sales season across our e-commerce clients. Okay, so here we'll elaborate a little bit more about uh, forecasting, which is a very uh, essential topic to, to being prepared to fight e-commerce fraud during this peak sales season time. It looks like the, the graph or the, the visualization to the right is a little uh, incorrectly formatted, but that's okay. So. Uh, what are the components of a good forecast? Well, some of the components that we already talked about are kind of getting information on data where our information on fraud activity, where fraud activity was relatively recent. So in previous uh, recent months, we also want to get some data on how frequent attacks are in, in kind of recent years during this, during this um, peak sales season time. And we also want to see what in general uh, how much in overall transaction value does this fraudulent activity that occurs in this time period? Um, what is the, like, how much, how much value is actually there, right? And so we can kind of, with these components, put together a good forecast that includes this sort of recency, frequency, and value, right? And it also helps, a, a good forecast helps us uh, give us a good sense of how much fraud to anticipate in this and in future months, right? So we can sort of create a worst case and best case scenario. So in a worst case scenario, I imagine there's large increases in fraud in low volume months, what we talked about before. And so oftentimes it's good to have, let's say a contingency plan. So maybe if that worst case scenario occurs, then we can reject uh, fewer transaction value uh, in future months to sort of decrease the denominator of the fraudulent rate, um, the fraud rate for those low value months. But anyway, giving, giving, getting a good forecast gives you uh, that option to create these kind of worst case and best case scenarios. So ah, also I want to talk about this visualization to the right. Um, this is what I'm alluding to throughout the presentation already is that there's this kind of uh, difference between the current fraud report date versus the months between the original date of the transaction and the date it was reported fraudulent in that month, if that makes sense. And so that's sort of complicated, so maybe we can go through a quick example. Um, so the, the uh, question that we want to answer in this kind of visualization is how long did it take between uh, an order was made for it to be reported as fraud if it's fraudulent? And so the colors in this visualization are essentially the transaction value of the fraud reported in these past months, right? Um, but we can take a particular example, like maybe that third row uh, for July, right? So we see that some fraud reported uh, in that month occurred in that month, right? So we see um, zero months in the past, right? That means that a transaction that was made in July was also reported as fraud in that, in that month. But in general, we see that most fraud reported in July in that third row occurred in the previous month, right? In the next most uh, two months ago and the next most three months ago, right? And so this is important, especially for these kind of low volume months in particular uh, that follow peak sales season, such as January, right? So you can imagine if certain these trends hold that some fraud reported uh, in January, some fraud uh, that was going to be reported in January occurred in, in that current month, but most of the fraud that's going to be reported in January occurred in the previous month, for example. So um, exactly the month where there's potentially high fraudulent activity during the holiday shopping season in December. Uh, so now I'll kind of, uh, since we talked about forecasting, I'll talk a little bit more about some specific 
strategies for preparedness, preparedness in general, but also preparedness in particular for peak sale season to avoid a lot of these scenarios that, that I already talked about, um, to avoid high fraud activity during these low volume months that follow peak sale season. All right, so the best way to, uh, to not be scared, to be prepared, right? So for a lot of these, uh, these techniques, they're, they make sense in that we want to see and make sure that we have enough resources so that our fraud detection models uh, work uninterrupted in production, right? So we often want to scale up model resources to, to anticipate a lot of these increases in transaction volume during peak sales season, right? And so what we do from a data science perspective more often is we load test our models, meaning okay, how many uh, inquiries can we receive per second and properly send a, a, a prediction score, right, for a particular transaction. If we notice that we're able to uh, send a prediction for, uh, let's say, three inquiries per second in normal times, but all of a sudden we are receiving 10 inquiries per five seconds because of this increase in transaction volume, we want to make sure that those models uh, work uninterrupted. So along these lines too, it's also important to check other components that compose our fraud detection models, right? Especially if they involve mm, querying or, or gathering information from other databases or data sources, right? We want to make sure with this kind of strain uh, on our resources that we anticipate, we want to make sure that we can quickly get responses from all these different data sources, right? And so from data science perspective, we're, all, we're constantly testing our model resources and making sure we have enough resources available to anticipate this kind of peak sales season uh, periods. And then finally, and I've, I've mentioned this before, is that we want to freeze our model changes until after peak sales season, right? So we don't want to make any model changes that are too quick or too um, untested and too soon before peak sales season. We want to make sure that we give ourselves enough time to test these, these new model changes and these new strategies um, ahead of time so that they can work or so we can make sure that they work uh, properly and in an in uninterrupted fashion in production. Okay, great. So I gave an overview of uh, preparedness strategies. We talked about uh, forecasting in particular, um, and we talked about some specific, more specific strategies for preparedness, especially in terms of model resources and tech resources, right? Um, so this last slide, I'd like to talk about just some other general preparedness tips that we normally do here at Natone, um, and this involves often collaborating with other teams, right? So not just from a data science perspective. Um, so yeah, so we often collaborate with our teams who uh, look at problematic trends or fraudulent trends in other industries. So in particular, uh, the business development team, right? And so a good example is, is sort of this increase in, in gift card fraud that we see in other industries, but also uh, that impact a lot of our e-commerce clients as well. Um, but we also work in tandem especially with our dev and IT teams at this time of year. So those teams that are mainly in charge of infrastructure and our architecture. Um, and so we, we work hand in hand with them, especially during this time of year to make sure that we have uh, our resources, our tech resources uh, deployed properly and uh, so that they can work in an uninterrupted fashion during these, these, these um, peak sales season times. And often a good, tactic that we do or that we employ is this kind of post-mortem approach to planning, right? So we pose ourselves a hypothetical question. Let's flash forward in two months in advance and pretend everything went wrong. Uh, how can we retrace our steps and diagnose exactly what went wrong um, during this time, right? And so that, that kind of question allows us to uh, spotlight any vulnerabilities we have in our, in our infrastructure and in our architecture to kind of anticipate anything that might go wrong during these times of um, unusually high strain on our, on our resources. Uh, so we also uh, make sure to collaborate with our customer support teams and make them aware uh, 
of uh, kind of fraud behavior that's specific to peak sales season times. Uh, so we often work with uh, or are in contact with our individual clients about this and work with the people um, who deal with these fraudsters, perhaps face to face, these customer support teams, right? Um, and so we work hand in hand with them as well to make sure that they are aware of the most recent problematic uh, fraudulent trends in, in industries uh, other than e-commerce, but also specific to e-commerce. Okay, great. So these are some of these uh, preparedness measures that we often employ, that we often take in anticipation of these peak sales seasons. Um, so I'm confident that if other organizations follow these strategies, then they will also have success in preventing uh, this kind of increase in fraudulent activity during these times. And so I'm happy to take any questions you might have or elaborate further on anything that I've mentioned in this presentation so far. Um, so I can go to the final slide. Here's my business and contact info. So if you want to contact me directly, um, feel free as well. All so right, Josh, yeah, so we'll open it up for uh, questions and answers. So again, if you uh, have a question, please submit it through the uh, Q&A chat box on your screen. So our first question, um, we don't have enough resources to prepare for this uh, peak season. What do you think would be the most uh, negative effects of such a worst case scenario? So uh, very little or no preparation. Sure, and you can hear me okay, right? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, so I think in general, the worst case scenario is is that um, there is a very high chargeback rate in these kind of low volume months. And this is what I've stressed throughout the webinar, which I think is very important. Um, again, the fraudulent activity that occurs during these peak sales season um, months it's not about the, the fraudulent activity themselves in the current months. It's about their bleeding over into these low volume months where you get into charge or chargeback or get into problems with chargeback schemes, for example. Um, and that's that's where where the major problems come in. And that's also just in general a tough start to the new year, right? Um, kind of gives your your clients, especially your, your e-commerce clients, sort of low trust in your capabilities. And so that, that's sort of the worst case scenario if, if uh, no preparedness measures are taken. I hope that All answers right. that question. All right, great. Uh, the next question from our audience. What are some examples of things uh, that you can do to warn customer support to uh, help out with fraud during the peak season? Sure, yeah. So in, in this case, uh, in this scenario, I think honestly having, this is where kind of client relation aspect comes in handy. Um, so we often work uh, like very hand in hand uh, with our clients and especially we have in contact, uh, we're putting contact with individuals on their customer support teams, right? And so we make sure to give them updates, not only on kind of recent fraud patterns that have occurred for that specific client, right? but also other e-commerce clients that we have, that we work with here at Natone, um, but also in, in across the e-commerce spectrum for clients for, across the entire industry, right? And so since we have that good relationship with a lot of our, our, our clients and their customer support teams, we're in pretty constant and clear communication with them in terms of what are the most recent fraud trends and how, how can they um, be most prepared to, to tackle those um, those fraudulent activity and, and those, especially those new trends. All right, great. The next question that we have, uh, you mentioned uh, lots of different strategies during the presentation. Uh, which do you think is the, the most uh, important or essential? Uh, again, if you're limited on resources, which, which would you choose to get the most bang for your buck? Sure, yeah, I think perhaps getting forecasts, right? So making sure that you at least have some rough forecasts from uh, even from your from your client uh, in particular, right? And so that just gives you a sense of, okay, maybe we're limited in terms of model resources and tech resources, but we can at least anticipate this influx in transaction volume, uh, and we can anticipate this load on our on our uh, tech resources so we can sort of anticipate 
um, what that might look like. But I also think it's important too to, uh, if you're in the business of deploying fraud detection models, to deploy these models that are built on as recent traffic as possible to make sure that you're capturing these more recent trends, uh, fraudulent trends, but also to create some kind of new features dedicated to fighting previous peak season fraud that might be cyclical in nature. So those those two things in particular, I think, um, especially getting at least a, a basic idea of what increase in transaction volume you can anticipate during these peak sales even times. All right, great. So the next question that we have, in what ways would you recommend uh, analytics or data science team to work with other teams? Uh, we already talked about uh, the call center. So uh, what about other other teams to talk to uh, in preparation for peak season? Sure, so in general, I think there's sort of the kind of three pillars that every sort of analytics and data science team uh, should be in touch with in terms of other teams to, to create a good and overall preparedness uh, strategy. I think number one is obviously the IT team, right? To again, troubleshoot those tech resources to make sure that uh, during times of unusually high strain that there won't be uh, uninterrupted service. I think also being in contact with kind of the business development team to make sure that you're aware of fraudulent behavior in other areas, especially in, uh, for clients in, um, in the same industry but not necessarily clients they work with exclusively. Um, and finally, I think also just the clients themselves, right? You're serving them. You want to make sure that your approach and your fraud preparedness approach is tailored to their needs, right? So you want to prepare um, kind of your relationship with their customer support teams and make sure that you're in contact and constant contact too throughout the peak season with the clients themselves. So if there is a fraud attack centered on particular geographies or with particular characteristics and they report you of it, um, that you can react to that, that new increase in fraudulent activity quickly. All right, great. Um, that looks like all the questions that we have uh, for today. So I guess uh, we will go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Uh, do you have any uh, closing thoughts that you'd like to convey to the audience? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to stress again the importance of, of preparedness during this time of year. In the kind of e-commerce sphere, this is there's probably no other time during the year where your preparation pays off the most, right? So I urge all teams, and not just analytics or data science teams, to to exclusively tailor your your fraud preparedness strategy and go out of your way to make sure that you're prepared during this time of unusually high activity, unusually high fraud activity. But also on usually high strain on your on your resources as well. Great, great. And if anyone has any more questions, uh, they can reach out to you, Byron. Correct. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. All right. So again, his email's there on the screen. So again, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to Byron. So we will go ahead and wrap up this webinar. Thank you, Byron, for your great presentation today, and thank you to everyone who attended. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. This webinar will be posted and available to MRC members in the Resource Center uh, on the MRC website uh, in a few days, uh, most likely next week. Uh, additionally, we have some great webinars coming up, so check those out on the website at www.merchantriskcouncil.org and sign up today. There is also a survey at the end of this webinar, so any feedback is much appreciated as we continue to improve the webinar program. So thank you again, Byron, and thank you again to everyone who attended and stay safe out there. Thank you everyone for joining, I appreciate it.